Now we can solve our problem by implementing our solution. First we need to find the heat generation due to blood flow. To do this we take our term from our bio heat transfer equation and plug in our known values. So we plug in the density, the specific heat, our blood flow per meter cubed of tissue, um, and our temperatures. And we end up with this for our heat generation due to blood flow in units of watts per meter cubed. Now we need to find the total heat generation or our Q term that we will be plugging into our general equation. So we've already found our heat due to blood flow but the problem tells us to consider heat generation due to blood flow as only half of this value. So to find our total heat generation we take our heat due to blood flow plus our metabolic heat generation which is given to us in the problem description. And this will be the Q we will use in our general equation. So now we can set up our general equation. And in our general equation, we have our conduction term, we have our heat due to blood flow term, and our metabolic heat generation term, which we can just reduce into this Q prime here. So we end up with this as our final general equation that we will be solving to find the temperature profile. But in order to solve this general equation, we need our boundary conditions. So as we've determined, we can use these two boundary conditions here to solve our general equation for our temperature profile. Okay, so now we have to do a bunch of math. So we take our general equation and we take our boundary conditions. We integrate our general equation and we apply our boundary conditions to solve for our constant values. And we end up with this expression right here for our temperature profile with respect to R or the radius of the brain. To find our average temperature, we begin with our volume average equation. And we're given the hint that our dV is really just equal to 2 pi r squared dr. So we could plug this in and solve for our average temperature, which ends up being 42.42 degrees Celsius. The problem also asks us whether the average temperature of the brain can ever reach 30 degrees Celsius or less. Well, we know that our brain is at steady state, or is at some set steady state, and we know that heat is constantly being generated within the brain. So in order for the brain to be at steady state, heat needs to constantly be lost through the surface of the brain. And in order for that to happen, there needs to be some temperature gradient between the surface and the inside of the brain. So if our outside surface is at 30 degrees Celsius, then the inside of, our, of the brain needs to be at, at a temperature less than 30 degrees Celsius in order for some temperature gradient to exist for heat to be lost or for this heat generated to be lost. Therefore we can conclude that the average temperature inside the brain will never reach 30 degrees Celsius or less. So now to find the maximum temperature we need to go back to calculus. So first we take our temperature profile and find our extrema by taking the first derivative and setting it equal to zero. And it turns out that our extrema occurs, or our maximum temperature occurs, at a radius of r equals zero. Now we can make a mental check at this point 
and see that it, it makes sense for the maximum temperature to occur at r equals zero because if heat is being lost through this outer surface then the point furthest away from the outer surface should be where the maximum temperature occurs which in fact it does so to find our maximum temperature we can just go back to our temperature profile and plug in a radius of zero and we determine our maximum temperature to be 61.05 degrees Celsius. This is nearly 20 degrees Celsius higher than our average temperature. We're also asked in this problem if the blood flow rate increases what will happen to the maximum temperature. So we can look at our equation for maximum temperature, which is just this equation here. And we need to remember that Q prime includes the effect of the blood flow rate. So if the blood flow rate increases, then ultimately Q prime will increase. And this in turn will cause an increase in the maximum temperature.